Hi, this is Dr. Eli Camp with Medicine Talk, and thank you for joining us today for our talk on naturopathic doctors. Please read the following medical disclaimer. The information contained in this Medicine Talk presentation is for educational purposes. Nothing contained in this presentation should be construed nor is intended to be used for medical diagnosis or treatment. It should not be used in place of the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider. Should you have any health care related questions, please call or see your physician or other health care provider promptly. Always consult with your physician or other health care provider before embarking on a new treatment, diet, or fitness program. You should never disregard medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have read or heard in this presentation. Okay, we have that out of the way. What are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about naturopathic doctors. There are more doctors than ever to choose from today. And I'd like to tell you about who naturopathic doctors are and how they're educated, how they get their license, what are they able to do. It's called scope of practice. Who governs naturopathic doctors? Do they know anything about pharmacy? Are they covered by insurance? And what kind of tools are in their tool bag? So a naturopathic doctor, also known as an ND, has attended and graduated from an accredited four-year naturopathic medical school. They've passed the clinical portion of the naturopathic physician's licensing examination, also known as the NPLEX. And basically, they are trained as primary care doctors. All NDs are dedicated to the philosophical teachings of Hippocrates, who is the father of modern-day medicine. He believed in the philosophy of vis medicatrix naturae, or in English, the healing power of nature. Naturopathic doctors follow additional philosophical guidelines, which are core to the practice of naturopathic medicine. These are first do no harm, the healing power of nature, discover and treat the cause, treat the whole person, doctor as teacher, and prevention is the best cure. In addition to mainstream medical training, an ND also receives classroom and clinical training in natural therapeutics. All healing therapies are based on a diverse and historically rich compilation of data. And some of this data has been collected over thousands of years, some is from modern clinical studies, and some is from clinical observation. Maybe one of the most important things to realize about a naturopathic doctor is that they treat people, not disease. And when treating people, the whole person must be considered, mind, body, and spirit in an individualized way so that each person's optimal health can be achieved. Medical school for any type of doctor is a difficult course of study, and entry into a program can be very competitive. All accredited naturopathic medical schools require a four-year bachelor's degree with specific coursework, such as biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, psychology, developmental psychology, and humanities. Naturopathic schools are four-year accredited programs. They are recognized as naturopathic medical schools from the Department of Education. And the first two years consist of a student learning all the basics, such as anatomy, physiology, pathology, chemistry, and more. And then after the first two years, a student must pass their National Basic Science Boards before they can even begin their clinical training and work with patients as student doctors. Once these tests are passed, they spend the next two years in a combination of clinical training and continued classroom training. The classroom training in the last two years focuses on specialties such as cardiology, oncology, pediatrics, and on natural therapeutics such as herbal medicine, homeopathy, nutrition, Chinese medicine, physical medicine, and more. The clinical portion brings students from the classroom into real-life treatment of patients under the supervision of attending physicians. Students rotate with different physicians in a variety of specialties and often train under all different types of doctors. 
After completing all classroom and clinical training and before licensing can take place, student doctors must pass their national clinical boards. Once all boards have been successfully passed and the student has graduated with their degree, they can apply for licensure in the state of their choice. That is, a state that offers licensing because not all states in the U.S. offer that choice. Residency after naturopathic medical school is optional, but many NDs do complete a residency after graduating. All of the following are accredited North American naturopathic medical schools. We have Bastyr University in Washington, Boucher Institute of Naturopathic Medicine in Canada, Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine, National College of Natural Medicine in Oregon, National University of Health Sciences in Illinois, the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Arizona, and the University of Bridgeport in Connecticut. In order for someone to be a candidate for any of the NPLEX tests or for state licensure, they must have attended one of these schools. For more information about the various naturopathic medical schools, you can visit the American Association of Naturopathic Medical Colleges website, which can be found at www.aanmc.org. And this website address is in our resources section at the end. Today's medical health care system consists of three types of doctors, which includes the medical doctor or MD, the osteopathic doctor or DO, and the naturopathic doctor, which is ND or in some states NMD. There's a very nice report that was compiled in 2001. And this report compares the training and education between the United States Department of Education recognized medical schools, including naturopathic medical schools. Let's look at the following schools. We have National, Bestier, and Southwest College, SCNM. And we're going to look at John Hopkins, Yale, and Stanford. We're going to take a look at basic sciences. And you can see that between the three schools that are naturopathic and the three that are the non-naturopathic, the hours are very similar. It's 1,535 hours on average for the naturopathic schools and the MD schools on average is 1,524. The basic and clinical sciences for both types of schools include anatomy, cell biology, physiology, histology, pathology, biochemistry, pharmacology, and many other ologies. The biggest difference comes in the allopathic, so those are the non-naturopathic therapies, which include lecture and clinical instruction in dermatology, family medicine, psychiatric medicine, pediatrics, gynecology, surgery, ophthalmology, and some other electives. So for naturopathic students, doctors, less time is spent on surgery and the clinical electives and pharmaceutical management of disease because we really, as naturopathic doctors, do not use a lot of pharmacy in practice. We don't have to. We restore health to the body in other ways. And these hours are devoted to naturopathic therapeutics, clinical nutrition, and counseling. So naturopathic therapeutics includes botanical medicine, homeopathy, oriental medicine, hydrotherapy, manipulative therapy, which is a little like chiropractic medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, uh, naturopathic case analysis and management, philosophy, and advanced naturopathic therapeutics. And as you can see, we get, they get no training, right? Um, Non-naturopathic doctors. There's therapeutic nutrition, and we get quite a bit of training in that and in counseling. The counseling for the non-naturopathic medical schools is mostly, it revolves around allopathic therapies. The average hours are very similar, 4,536 hours for NDs and 4,900 hours for MDs. They're just divided in different ways for a very different type of medical training. By comparing the three types of medical professionals, MD, 
DO and naturopathic doctors, we'll see that there are some similarities, but there's also some very big differences. So the amount of education for all three is very similar. A bachelor's degree is required by all MD, DO, and naturopathic schools. All of the programs are four-year programs. All have the opportunity to complete a residency. We start to see a difference in the clinical application of what each physician has learned, the amount of time spent with each patient, and the focus of treatment. Over the last couple of years, due to public demand, some MDs and DOs are indeed spending more time with their patients, especially on the first office visit. But this is the exception rather than the rule. While MDs and DOs spend 10 to 20 minutes with each patient, a naturopathic doctor is, to, is trained to spend a minimum of 45 minutes. And with most new patients, the majority of naturopathic doctors spend two hours on average. All three Healthcare types of professionals are trained to use a standard disease diagnosis. When it comes to treatment, MDs and DOs are trained to use a standard treatment protocol dictated by the diagnosis. We call this disease-focused treatment. On the other hand, naturopathic doctors use an individualized treatment plan based on the patient's extensive health history and unique needs in order to treat the whole person and not the disease. In very plain language, this basically boils down to every single patient getting a very individualized and often different treatment plan that encourages health to be restored in their body. Another difference is that all not, not all states have a law that requires insurance companies to reimburse for naturopathic care, although with education and awareness, this is slowly changing. Naturopathic visits are reimbursed by many insurance companies in states like Arizona, Vermont, Connecticut, Washington, New Hampshire, and others. The type of insurance plan a person has also determines whether the visit is covered by insurance. Most people have opted for health savings plans, which are offered by major insurance companies, and they use this money in their health savings plan to pay for a visit to see the naturopathic doctor as well as supplements. The various types of health care providers use different philosophies to guide treatment. MDs and DOs will identify the disease based on a list of symptoms, health history, lab work. Naturopathic doctors will also use these very similar types of tools, but they're trained to know that each person has a unique and individualized cause of disease. Thus, they use the symptoms in the lab work too, but to fully understand the cause of disease, they will take into consideration the patient's extended health history. In regards to health history, the MDs, DOs will take a basic history, gathering information like surgeries, broken bones, and family health history. Naturopathic doctors will gather that information as well, but they take a much expanded health history. They gather information like antibiotic and pharmaceutical use, diet history, mental emotional history, environment history, like where have they lived, what have you been exposed to, what are you currently being exposed to, and more. It's sort of like gathering pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that then have to be fit together until a recognizable picture emerges of what could be the underlying cause of illness. And one of the major differences between the three types of health professionals lies in the treatment protocols. So MDs and DOs are trained to use pharmaceuticals as their main treatment modality. While some DOs may treat with natural therapies, these are mainly applied to the symptoms of disease rather than applied to restoring balance by eliminating the cause of disease. Naturopathic doctors use a wide range of healing modalities to address underlying imbalances and deficiencies that have led to the quote-unquote symptoms a person experiences. While naturopathic doctors are trained in the use of pharmaceuticals and in many states can prescribe them, most naturopathic doctors do not use prescription medications as they address symptoms rather than restore health. 
There are many instances where pharmaceuticals can maintain life, and they're an absolute necessity, but they rarely bring about cure. So for some people, a combination of pharmacy and natural therapies are needed, while for others, pharmaceutical agents are not needed at all. A naturopathic doctor is trained to know when and where pharmaceuticals are a necessity and when health can be restored using other therapies. So in general, preventative medicine means something different to each type of health professional. An MD might use preventative medicine in the sense that they encourage their patients to get regular checkups and exams such as mammograms. In addition, MDs may recommend a diet change for a patient at risk for heart disease. However, naturopathic doctors are taught and practice preventative medicine. It's emphasized, right, to a much larger extent. So an MD may recommend a change, but a naturopathic doctor will recommend a change and then serve as coach, guiding patients on how to make the changes. They'll use tools such as diet diaries, education, web and literary resources, counseling, and supplement support. According to the principles of naturopathic medicine, prevention is the best cure. So I've mentioned a little bit about licensing and that some states license, some states don't. So what is, what is this all about? Well, licensing provides protection, right? It equals protection for the public by ensuring that an individual using the title ND is appropriately changed. They're, they're a doctor, right? A licensing law also describes in detail the scope of practice or simply stated what an ND can and cannot do in that state. For instance, in some states, an ND can do minor surgery, such as putting in or taking out stitches, while in others they cannot. In addition, when a state has a licensing law in place, they have a regulatory board that oversees what all NDs in that state can do. The states that currently have laws in place, which allow NDs to practice and which protects the public, are Alaska, Arizona, California, Colorado. You can read the list. So there's quite a few. Many other states have licensing efforts underway, which is really good news, not only for the naturopathic doctors, but for you, the public, as well. In states without a licensing law, here, here's where it gets a little scary. Anyone can portray themselves as a naturopathic doctor with or without appropriate medical training. Every year, more and more states do pass legislation that allows an ND to gain a medical license with the guidelines established as to who can be issued these licenses. So there are several groups that support and govern naturopathic doctors. The first one is the National Association called the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians. And they support naturopathic doctors by providing continuing education, they educate the public with standardized information, and they provide an annual conference. The North American Board of Naturopathic Examiners, NABNI, these are the folks that regulate and organize the Naturopathic Physicians Licensing Exam, the NPLEX, which are the national boards for NDs. The U.S. Secretary of Education recognizes the Council on naturopathic medical education as the national accrediting agency for programs leading to the doctor of naturopathic medicine. And then each state has licensing boards that govern the NDs, the ones that offer licensure, that is. So now you have a basic understanding of how NDs approach health and disease. What kind of health conditions can be treated naturopathically? Well, NDs treat people who suffer from the symptoms of almost any kind of disease, arthritis, asthma, cancer, chronic fatigue, allergies, acute colds and flus, thyroid, headache, chronic pain, diabetes, and they work with people from all ages, right, from infants to the elderly. And we have to ask what kind of tools are in their tool bags. And we'll go through most of these in more detail, but here's just a quick list of therapeutic tools that an ND is trained in and may use when helping people restore their health. We have acupuncture, also known as a part of traditional Chinese medicine, botanical medicine, which uses herbs and plants, 
homeopathy, hydrotherapy, the use of water to restore health, physical medicine and naturopathic manipulation, which again, um, most people are very familiar with what chiropractors do. It's physical medicine, and this is what naturopathic doctors are taught, naturopathic phys physical medicine. Mind body medicine, because we are a whole being, mind, body, spirit. Lifestyle and nutritional counseling, how you live, what you're exposing yourself to, and what you eat is very important when it comes to understanding the underlying cause of illness and restoring health. Environmental medicine, what toxins are you exposed to? IV therapy, detoxification and colonic therapy, pharmacy, and minor surgery. So as mentioned before, what an ND can do varies by state and by the laws each state has or does not have in place. So we'll talk a little bit about acupuncture because now this has really become a common household term even if everyone doesn't know exactly what it entails, they recognize the word. And this is part of a traditional Chinese medicine which is a system of healthcare over 4,000 years old, some say much older than that, and it's still used in mainstream Chinese medicine. You know, there's evidence that the practice of acupuncture may extend back as far as 10,000 years ago. So when giving acupuncture treatments, a practitioner will insert thin needles into points on the body that are called meridian points. And they do this in order to stimulate or calm something called qi, which is the life force that runs through a person's body. It's an entire system of medicine and it includes herbs, diet, lifestyle, and acupuncture, among other things, right? The, it, traditional Chinese medicine has a number of different things that are contained within it. But we do have a lot of clinical research that supports the positive results, things that have been measured before, during, and after treatment. Botanical medicine. You know, the known use of plants in medicine dates back over 10,000 years. And it is actually believed by most anthropologists and ethnobotanists that humans have had a medicinal relationship with plants since our current evolutionary stage. And the majority of pharmaceuticals were and still are based on constituents that are found in, right? And, and based on the historical use of plants. Chemicals are extracted, studied, and then synthetically mass produced. For example, the active ingredient in modern day aspirin is salicylic acid, which can be found in white willow bark. The naturopathic use of botanicals does not consist of isolating the chemical compounds and mass producing them in a lab, right? We have a tendency to use the whole herb as much as possible. Sometimes it's safe to do that and sometimes it's not. And naturopathic doctors are trained to know when and how and what form to use herbs in. There is a difference between using botanical medicine to treat symptoms and to restore health. In naturopathic medicine, botanicals are used to repair and heal damaged systems that underlay the symptoms of disease and they're part of a comprehensive approach to restoring health. The naturopathic preparation of botanicals can include roots, stems, leaves, flowers, or seeds, and can be prepared into teas and tinctures, essential oils, or compresses. The right combination of botanicals with the right preparation can help target healing in a very individualized way. And botanical medicine is a very gentle and effective therapy when it's used properly, right? And when that happens, there are few, if any, negative side effects. Homeopathy was developed by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, a German doctor who lived during the late 17 and early 1800s. Homeopathy stimulates the body's natural ability to heal by restoring and balancing a person's vital force. This therapy is based on something called the law of similars, which states that what a substance can cause, it can cure, or in other words, like cures like. But often that substance that's being used is very, very, very dilute. Symptoms in homeopathy are not looked at in a singular way, they're taken as part of a larger picture. 
right? Where they're looked at more holistically. And they present the picture of someone's imbalanced vital force. Homeopathy may be one of the most gentle yet powerful therapies used in naturopathic medicine. Hydrotherapy. This is the use of water to help restore and stimulate health within an individual. There are many different types of hydrotherapy from simple bathing to more complex such as constitutional hydrotherapy. Archaeologists and anthropologists surmise that the use of water as a means of restoring and maintaining health predates written history. There are many artifacts, paintings, and runes that suggest the use of water was an integral part of a healthy society. The theory of hydrotherapy is traced to Hippocrates in about 400 BC. The practice of cold bathing was written about in 1697 by Dr. John Floyer, an English physician, and the practice of hydrotherapy as a healing modality is credited to several people, including Johann Hahn in 1749 and Vincent Priestnitz in the mid-1800s. Today, it is used to restore and maintain health worldwide, and it's considered a cornerstone of naturopathic medicine. One type of hydrotherapy known as constitutional hydrotherapy consists of the application of hot and cold compresses, sine wave stimulation to the core area of the body to increase flow to vital organs and which helps the body with detoxification. This therapy is used often in chronic illnesses to stimulate deep and curative healing. Another method, contrast hydrotherapy, uses the application of ice packs or hot compresses to local areas of the body during times of illness or injury, which were all very common with putting ice on a sprained ankle. This is a form of hydrotherapy. In general, there are many wonderful benefits of hydrotherapy, including a boost to the immune system, supportive detoxification, stimulation of the gastrointestinal tract, and promotion of relaxation and stress relief. Naturopathic physical medicine is hands-on healing of the physical body. It consists of treating the muscles and joints, ligaments, tendons, and bones. And this type of therapy is very important for people. And NDs use a variety of naturopathic physical medicine techniques. As I've mentioned, naturopathic manipulative technique is similar to chiropractic adjustments, but is often much gentler. With this therapy, an ND can help encourage healing in numerous ways. Other physical medicine therapies that an ND may be trained to use includes massage and craniosacral technique. But the overall benefits of physical medicine include the ability to address and manage acute and chronic pain, address misalignments in the body, degeneration, circulation, nervous system function, inflammation. It's also an excellent healing modality for chronic disease, neck, back, sports, and motor vehicle injuries. When it comes to being healthy, a very important but often overlooked component is stress management. Stress is a normal part of everyday life, but when lifestyle choices lead us down a path of mismanaging the stress we experience daily, our health can really take a downward turn. Prolonged exposure to stress and the non-management of the effects it produces can lead to serious health complications like lowered immunity, increased blood pressure, extended output of cortisol into the body, adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue. So learning key lifestyle changes and stress management techniques can really help minimize the effect of stress on the body and it can stimulate the restoration of health. Wow, what environment we find ourselves living in these days. Children and adults are being exposed to greater quantities of chemicals in the environment and food supply. A few examples include jet fuel, car fuel exhaust, manufacturing waste, contaminated water supply, pesticides, and much more. And while there have been improvements in some areas, 
contamination of our environment and of our bodies is still of great concern. These chemicals interact synergistically to increase their negative effects, such as stress to our immune system and an overwhelmed detoxification system. Naturopathic detoxification and immune-boosting therapies are a really important aspect of restoring health and can include many different approaches such as cleanses, detox protocols, IV therapy, and more. Food is medicine, right? Or poison, depending on what is put into the body. Our body uses what we eat to build, regenerate, and repair our tissues, glands, bones, and organs. If what we eat is toxic or does not contain the proper nutrients, then those parts of us that are newly made each day, and we do, we remake ourselves new all over the body every day, well, they can become deficient or even toxic. So clinical nutrition emphasizes health through food. Energy, nutrients, and proper hydration are the building blocks of all of the physiological reactions in our body. Good nutrition supplies the body with vitamins and minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, sugars, fats. When it comes to clinical nutrition, NDs take the concept to a deeper, more individualized level. And this may include eliminating foods that a person has sensitivity to while increasing the consumption of organic whole foods which are free of pesticides and toxins, no preservatives, no artificial sweeteners or flavor enhancers. A naturopathic doctor is truly a specialist in this area and nutrition consultations are included in every patient treatment plan. I mean, we all, right, after all, are made of what we eat. Alternative labs are similar to conventional labs in that they consist of biological testing. However, they're labeled alternative because the tests are not always used by conventional doctors. Some reasons these tests are not always used include they may be based on new science. Doctors may not be trained on how to interpret the test results. Insurance companies might not cover the cost of the test. And some of the tests may be controversial. However, I'll tell you this. Some alternative lab tests have now become mainstream, such as testing for B12 or vitamin D. Alternative lab tests can provide very valuable information to help a naturopathic doctor uncover the underlying cause of disease. And some examples include food allergy sensitivity testing, comprehensive stool panels, looking for parasites or bacteria or remnants of, of other things that might be going on in the GI tract, adrenal gland functioning, right? Take, for instance, a patient who has problems with their GI tract. So instead of treating the symptoms, which might include gas, bloating, and constipation, a naturopathic doctor would use a comprehensive stool panel and a food allergy sensitivity test to determine the underlying cause of disease. And based on the results, an individualized treatment plan could be created that addresses not only the symptoms, but the root cause itself. Take out these foods, take care, treat this, and boom, you've got health restored to the GI tract, the symptoms disappear. So some labs can be ordered through primary care doctors if they're willing to work in conjunction with your naturopathic doctor. And this is because most mainstream doctors really don't know how to interpret these types of tests. And naturopathic interpretation of your mainstream conventional labs can really vary from mainstream interpretation. So we come to different conclusions because we think about them in a different way. And always the big question, what do naturopathic doctors know about pharmacy? Well, on average, they get 120 hours of pharmacy education from PharmDs and PhDs, including current guidelines. And this is very comparable to the pharmacy education received in the classroom by other types of doctors, including MDs and DOs. 
The biggest difference between the three types of medical doctors is in the clinical rotations and medical residencies. So DOs and MDs receive pharmacy-centric treatment, whereas naturopathic doctors learn pharmacy as part of a broad spectrum of treatment modalities. For example, example, in some acute bacterial infections, an ND may decide to prescribe an antibiotic in addition to other treatments. On the other hand, in many viral infections, instead of an antibiotic, an ND may decide to use immune-boosting therapies. So while NDs are trained in the use of pharmaceuticals, they usually use them only when absolutely necessary. Not all pharmaceutical agents are included within the scope of practice, and this varies by state. In unlicensed states, NDs cannot write prescriptions even though they are trained to do so. NDs are trained to know when someone should be on pharmaceutical therapy. If they are in a state where they cannot prescribe, they will usually refer you to another doctor. And even in a state where NDs can prescribe, they may refer you to someone with more pharmaceutical expertise. But this varies from ND to ND. So, in summary, we've talked about how naturopathic doctors attend four-year naturopathic medical schools and they complete national board exams. We know now that they treat the cause of disease, not just the symptoms, by assessing each person on an individual level and developing individualized treatment plans. NDs have many tools in their toolbox, including nutrition, homeopathy, herbal medicine, pharmacy, and much more. And really, NDs are partners for you along your journey to health. There are some books here which could be a great resource for you if you want to learn more about naturopathic doctors and natural therapeutics. And we have a list of online resources for you. If you need more resources, check out Medicine Talk at www medicinetalk.org or let us know what you're looking for. We're really happy to help. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you. We're all very passionate about spreading the word of naturopathic medicine. Each of us have our own reasons for working with and being dedicated to Medicine Talk, but ultimately it's about educating as many people as we can. So feel free to reach out to any one of us with comments or questions. We love your suggestions and encourage you to tell us what you think. Most importantly, we would greatly appreciate you telling your friends, family, clients, and colleagues about the work we are doing. Like us, follow us, share us on all your social media, and together with your help, we can tell the world. Thanks again for joining us today, and we look forward to our next visit together.